Hi, Virgos. This is your 2019 year in advance reading, okay? So if you haven't read with me before, what I do is I shuffle the deck before the camera starts rolling, and then I cut the deck in front of you. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the deck in front of you. Okay. Right there looks good. All right. So this is a 2019 year in advance reading for Virgo. If your son is a Virgo, so what you know as your zodiac sign, right? If you are Virgo there, you want to watch this. If your moon is a Virgo, you're going to want to watch this. If you're rising or your ascendant, they're the same thing, just two different ways of calling it, depending on who you talk to, is a Virgo, you're going to want to watch this. But if somebody important to you is also any one of those three signs as a Virgo, this would give you insight for them also, okay? So what I'm doing is I'm going to put four cards. I'm going to lay down four cards in three different lines. So these are going to be your trimesters for the year, okay? So we have January, February, March, and April, all right? I'm trying to leave this straight so that way you can see it's just from the top may june july august september october november and december all right so virgo this is your 2019 year in advance okay are you ready let's go for January, I'm going to pull the cards over here so that way we can see them better. We can zoom in better. Okay, I hope I don't get that much of a glare. All right, so your keyword is purification. And what we have going on here with your purification is a lot of rain, right? Do you think of rain as purifying? Is it cleansing? Does it clean the earth, trees, rocks, the ground, whatever you want to say. Usually it does. So what are you purifying, Virgo? What needs to be purified? I want you to take a look over here into the corner, okay? So when we read, this part of the card is usually from the past. So in the past, we have a full moon. We've got completion. We've got dead or not no longer growing hibernating trees right so what has completed what was finished what what are you waking up from what are you getting ready to start new what are you cleansing this month is all about that okay so let's check out february we have a submerged as the keyword an iceberg you see that? Icebergs are... Icebergs are the picture. I'm sorry, I got distracted by a ghost. <laughs> okay, so in February, you're going to be having quite a bit of... Quite a bit of conflicting thoughts. Quite a bit of arguments with people you're going to feel like people are being cold to you and you're going to be feeling like you're cold to people people around you are going to be feeling like you're very cold to them okay and I'm going to show you what's why I'm picking this up because submerged doesn't really mean that submerged means there's things you're not talking about right so this is something else that you're going to need to be really careful about what are you not talking about what feelings are you keeping submerged and how can you let others know those feelings okay but if we look at this iceberg here, we can see like here's a forehead, it comes into a nose, here's the mouth, and here it comes into the chin, right? And then the chin down is submerged. Same thing with this one. Here's a forehead and into the nose. And then we've got the mouth and the chin is submerged. It looks like they're butting heads. It looks like they're constantly arguing. It looks like they can't understand each other, right? Water is an emotion. Water is associated to emotion. So these icebergs, all they are are frozen emotions. 
and they're butting heads with each other. So you're not able to see somebody else's emotion and agree with them. And that person isn't able to see your emotions and agree with you. You need to be very careful with this throughout February. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and put this one back. March 2019. And we have a wake up call. Okay. I really, really like how so far this year you have a lot of water going on here. Okay. A lot of emotion is happening. Why Virgo? What emotions are you trying to get rid of? What emotions are you holding on to? What emotions are you not letting other people know about? In March, those emotions are going to start flooding you. They are becoming a wake-up call for you. How you react to your emotions is not healthy. Okay? So what can you do to make your emotions healthy? What can you do to help them be seen and understood and cope with them? How do you let people know about them all without butting heads with them? And this is something that's going to be your focus for March, because if it's not, it's going to be like a tsunami. It's going to be overwhelming. It's going to drown people. You might alienate people around you. You might alienate yourself, and that's not something you truly want. Or is it? Sometimes tsunamis can be purifying. See this? Sometimes tsunamis can be cleansing. You need to decide if it's the kind of cleansing you want or if it's going to be destructive and what actions you want. Okay, here we have April. In April, we have shape-shifting and some more water. Here we go. Your emotions are, they're really potent for this first trimester of the year. Okay, and I know you don't like them to be that way. You really don't like that much emotions. So what's going on? Okay. In April, not only do we have water down here again, we've got some mountains. So you've got some uphill struggles gonna, that are going to happen. Your key word is shape-shifting. And in this picture, where do we see shape-shifting, right? You're probably thinking werewolf or some sort of were animal. I want you to think of shape-shifting a little bit differently. Shape-shifting is changing the way people perceive you, changing the way people think about you, changing the way people think you look, changing the way people think you react, okay? So take a look at the clouds. Up here at the top, let me point it out, up here at the top we've got really dark storm clouds, but then they start shifting into these white fluffy clouds. Do you see this? Of course you do. That is the shape shifting. Clouds are associated with thought because they're associated to the air. Okay, so how are you changing your thoughts? How are you changing the way you think? I'm going to pull this card over here for just a second. I associate clouds, honest clouds, not only with thought but with emotions because clouds are a form of water, water precipitation, right? It becomes a steam. It's a different way of water. Um, one of the different forms of water. And they also hold rain, which is water. So here we had frozen water, right? Your emotions were frozen in this one. Here we have your emotions being thought out. Your emotions through thought. Your emotions being perceived by thought. So we have more emotions for the first trimester of the year. You see this? Lots of emotions for you to deal with. And as perfectionists, you don't like to be dealing with this much emotion. So what can you be doing to help you understand your emotions? What can you be doing to help you react to your emotions in a healthy way? I'm going to say your lists that you love to create, those are what you need to be doing. Okay? All right, let's go on to May. For May, we have synergy. Okay. Look at this forest. 
We don't see any water in this forest. We don't see any earth in this forest, right? And we don't see dirt is what I mean by earth. There's just tons and tons of plant life. I don't see any animals in this forest. Mm, yeah, I still don't see any animals in this forest. Oh, I spotted a snake. Here, look. A snake. Okay, so what do you need to bring together to create synergy? You are an earth sign. And so far, your beginning of the year has been all about water and emotions. Water and earth together create beautiful aspects, right? Look at these plants. If the plant doesn't have water, it can't live. If it doesn't have soil, it can't live. Same thing with animals. If they don't have some place to live, let's say earth animals, right? They don't have dirt to stand on. They don't have land to stand on. And they don't have water, they can't live. Water animals, not so much because they have water and they live in water. But do you see what I'm saying? How can you use your emotions to grow something beautiful? How can you use your emotions to grow something amazing? How can you use air to grow something amazing? How can you, um, air is associated with thoughts. So how do you use your thoughts to grow something beautiful? Uh, fire is associated with passion and action movement. How can you use that to create something beautiful? This whole month of May is how do you work with yourself and all of the pieces of yourself, but how do you work with everybody around you? So that way your synergy is strong and healthy and grows instead of kills, okay? This one is June, invocation. Take a look at this woman. She has taken a few minutes out of her very, very busy day to do what? Maybe she's praying. She's connecting. <laughs> we can go on and on and on about what she's doing. She's praying. She's chanting. She's working magic. She's working healings. She's working energy. Whatever. Whatever she's doing, she's connecting to her spiritual self. She's connecting to her emotional self. She's connecting to her mental self. self and she's connecting to what her divinity is. So, Virgo, when was the last time you did that? waiting now I want you to take a look I don't see too much water in this image but we have fire from the candles right fire we have earth from the crystals we've got some incense smoke going up right here so we've got air fire and earth the water I don't see water I don't see rain but maybe the water is her own emotions it's synergy. She's working all of these things together to create a powerful energy. Okay? Can you do that? When was the last time you did that? How are you connecting to yourself and to your divinity? This is going to be a focus for June. It's a very important focus also. July. We have veiled fog. <laughs> okay, so what's fog? Fog is too much water in the air that's created a dense precipitation, a dense cloud cover that can't float up higher into the sky because it's too heavy. So we have our thoughts are too heavy and we have our emotions are too heavy. And what is it creating? It's creating something so dense and so thick you cannot see through it. The key word is veiled. What is veiled? Your emotions are veiled. Your energy is veiled. Your thoughts are veiled. Any goals that you have are veiled. Everything around you is veiled. Okay? What can you do to get over it? Through it? Well, you can climb up to the top of the trees. <laughs> Don't recommend it, but you could climb up to the top of the trees. And you could start looking around. But really, what are you going to see? The top of the fog? Or you can do the uphill struggle that, you're been, that you've been avoiding tops of those mountains get to the tops of those mountains so that way you could probably see through it or you could just control your thoughts and your emotions for a little while and let the sun dilute it which one are you going to choose this is for july so july pretty much is telling you 
there's going to be some places in the month, there's going to be some times in the month that you're not going to be happy, you're not going to be able to see through what's going on. It's going to frustrate you, it's going to make your work much, much harder, but just hold on and wait for a little while because it will get better. And here we have a lotus, lotus flower. Okay, so the lotus flower is a very, very, very interesting flower. And it's actually considered the flower of spirituality. The reason being of enlightenment, of absolute like emotional strength. And the reason being is the lotus flower doesn't grow in water or in dirt. The lotus flower grows in mud. And yeah, I know you can see some water here on the top. And there probably is some water above a load of mud. And it's not like normal mud. From what I understand, this is really, really crappy, gross mud with lots of rocks. And um, almost like clay, right? So it grows through this. It trudges through this. And it continues to reach and reach and reach until it gets to the surface where it'll bloom. Which means <laughs> this card that was like, it's going to be really difficult. It's going to be really tough. It's going to be really gross. You're not going to be able to see what's going on, right? That is your fog that, or that is your mud. That is your crap that you need to get through. So that way you can bloom. Okay. But all of the rest of this and the synergy, and the being able to connect to yourself and to the divinity is bringing you to this time where you're not sure what the heck to go on, to go on, right? You don't know what is going on either. You don't know to fall to this side. You don't know to fall to that side. It's just a really tough, confusing time, but that is your mud. So that way you can unfold and you can be enlightened. Okay, so let's take a look at this for just a few minutes. We have a first trimester, Virgo, of constant emotional upheaval, constant emotional distress. If you look at it in a strong, healthy, positive way, you've got lots of emotions that maybe you don't want to carry into the year with you. Maybe you were trying to get rid of them. You've got emotions that you're trying to keep from other people and it's causing some issues. So now you're going to stop and look at those emotions, decide if you want to keep those emotions or not, decide if they're crap and you're going to let go of them. You've got a wake up call, mostly through emotions. You have a tsunami happening and it's going to cause you to start changing the way you react. But the way you change is creating synergy, okay? It's going to be for the best. So even though it feels like crap, it's for the best. All of that is part of the trying to sprout through mud, okay? So then you start connecting to you yourself, to your own emotions, to your own spirituality, to your divinity, to anything outside of you that you feel is divine. And this starts to help you understand your emotions and your intuition and your thoughts much, much better. But for a little while, you're still not going to see how all of this fits together, you're going to know it's working, but you don't know how it fits together until August when you reach through all of that crap and you start to bloom. Okay, so let's see what September has in store for you. We have diligence. Really like that. So you've gone through a whole bunch of change. If you've gone through a whole bunch of change... And it hasn't become a habit. And a lot of people will say a habit forms at 28 days. Some people say eight weeks. So a lot of this stuff is still change for you. There's every chance that when something happens, you can go back to your old way of thinking. Okay? Your old way of reacting. You can be stubborn, Virgo. And that's not usually your, what's associated with your sign, but it is very possible. So the vigilance that you need is to be watching your reactions. When something happens, are you going to react the way that you reacted in 2018? Or are you going to react differently? Let's take a look at what the card says you should do. It says you should react differently. You should be vigilant on your reactions. Look at the water. The water is so calm. It looks almost like ice, right? looks almost like glass. 
it reflects all of your strong points. Take a look at the clouds. The clouds are just kind of nice, wispy, strong clouds. Do you see that? They don't look storm-like. They don't look upsetting. They just look like happy clouds. So your thoughts will stay happy. Your thoughts are strong. All of this rock, all of this mountain is strong. We have really nice sand also. Your earth sections, you're grounded, okay? The rocks are helping you stay grounded. The rocks are helping you stay focused. They are telling you, though, you need to stay focused. You need to stay vigilant because it is an uphill battle still. But you know this battle. You know these rocks. You know how to climb them. You can climb them with your eyes closed if you're willing to. So, Virgo, stay willing to react like the lotus flower with beauty and grace and spirituality and enlightenment and kindness and you're compassionate and wonderful and happy. React like that. Don't react like an emotional disaster. Don't react like a tsunami. Okay? So here we have October. You see, I took it from October's place. And what do we have? We have earth magic. I really like that you earth signs get this earth magic sometimes. Okay, so what do we have for earth magic? We've got the flower and we have plants again, which are very, very, very earth-like. And they mean growth. They mean abundance, um, beauty. So Virgo, everything you've been through this year has been bringing you beauty. You know how to act with kindness. You know how to act with um, compassion. Virgo, it's very, very, very easy for you to be a smartass, for you to be sassy, for you to be snarky, for you to be offensive without even meaning to be offensive. So you're going to need to be very careful with how you react to other people because you may have healed, but they might not have. And you can use your words. You can use your reactions as a way to heal. Take a look at this fairy. She looks very angelic to me, very enlightened. And I'm going to say this fairy is you if you've done your work. Okay, so in October, pay attention to how you're reacting with other people. Pay attention to how you're reacting with yourself. What are you growing? What magic are you giving to other people? Okay, November. We have power and lightning. All right, remember where I said you can react as a tsunami, right? And I've told you to be careful with how you're reacting. You have the right to be strong in your reactions. You have the right to be angry if the situation calls for anger. You have the right to stop abusive relationships, relationships that are one-sided, relationships where you have to constantly be careful with how you're talking because the person you're friends with doesn't understand your snarky humor and you feel like it's killing you, you feel like it's caged you, you have the right to end those relationships. You have the right, if somebody is being abusive to you, to be cruel back. Now, don't be cruel because you want to hurt them back. Be cruel because you have the power to defend yourself. Do you see what I'm saying? There's a big, big difference in this. And a lot of people will put words in my mouth and say, well, Maria said I could be cruel. You can be cruel in return in equal measure. You can be cruel in order to defend yourself. A lot of people will totally despise that you stop relationships with them because you allowed them to be mean to you before you should allow them to be mean to you now you can stop a relationship you can completely cut them out of your life and never say a word to them you just completely ignore them that is totally fine do not forget throughout this year where i've asked you to be very careful with your emotions where I've asked you to pay very close attention to how you're reacting and to become kind and to become enlightened and to become calm, that you have power. And nobody's taking that power away from you. Okay, Virgo? You have the right to say no and to mean it. And if they continue to push you, you have the right to let all of your sassy, witty power come out 
okay? You are not a doormat, and I do not recommend or um, tell anybody to be a doormat, okay? December. Oh, we have crystals and focus. Look at this. This is so pretty. I don't think I've ever seen this card. Thank you, Virgo, for bringing this card out for me to look at. Wow. <laughs> There's so much going on here. <laughs> we have a lot of earth, but a lot of this earth is amethyst. I'm going to say it's amethyst, okay? It might not be, but I'm going with amethyst. Amethyst is a wonderful stone for focus, like how that says. It's a wonderful stone for your thoughts. It's a healing stone, and I love the fact that it's a healing stone for, like, headaches and for your head, and the whole thing is focus. Okay, then we have water. You've been working with water all year, but this water doesn't quite look watery, does it? It looks like crystals, too, <laughs> which is kind of like, whoa. Everything in here actually looks like some sort of form of crystal. That um, mountain back there, it looks like tree agate, kind of. It kind of looks like quartz. We've got those fairies from October. Take a look at this. We've got those fairies coming in right here. So the earth magic. A lot of people will say crystals are earth magic. We've got them coming in. We have just so much high vibration here, okay? It's such a beautiful card. And all of it is saying just to keep focused on what is important to you. Your emotions have been kind of out of whack this year as you tried to get work through them. It's time to focus on them. It's time to focus on what it is that you want. And I love that this is for December because what do you want for, for 2020? You've got through a massive amount of crap this year. You've gotten through a lot of stuff that's been holding you back. A lot of stuff you're still holding on to from 2018, you got through it. You've learned your lessons fully and completely. Focus on how you're going to use these lessons, okay? Okay. So, Virgo. There's been some parts in this year where I've been like, ugh. And I know, I know, you've totally been, ugh, more of that. But your second trimester of the year... All of that's coming together to work for your best interest. All of that's coming together to make you stronger, okay? And then your third trimester of the year, you understand how to use that energy. You understand how to use that synergy. You understand everything that happened in that first trimester and why it's happening and how to move all of this into 2020 to make 2020 your best year yet, okay? So what I recommend with these readings is you come back to them throughout the year and watch, fast forward it to the month that it is in May, fast forward to May or watch the full month and go, yes, 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 that happened, that happened, that happened. Or you know what? You were off on that one, but you were correct on everything else. So what's going on for the rest of the year? How do I focus for the rest of the year? How do I continue to keep my focus in the right direction for the rest of the year? Now, this is a general reading, okay? It's for everybody that is a Virgo sign. Virgo sun, Virgo moon, Virgo ascendant, everybody. If you want your own reading personalized to you, there is a link in the information below to the website where you can go get your own personal reading, okay? If you liked the reading and it was valuable to you, hit subscribe Hit like first off, right? Then hit subscribe. So that way you know when your ascendant to your rising video is up. You know when your moon rise, your moon video is up. You also know when somebody who's important to you, say your spouse, your children, your mom, your dad, whatever, their videos are up. You can watch them. And also throughout the year, you can come back and watch videos throughout the year. You can come back and watch information throughout the year. Okay? So... Thank you so very much, Virgo, for allowing me to read for you. I really appreciated it. I'll see you throughout the year. Bye.